Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're going to review Castle of the Alchemist, a brand new game that is soon going to be available in early access. I had the pleasure of receiving an even earlier early access in exchange for a fair and unbiased review. So, Castle of the Alchemist is a medieval fantasy version which uh, closely resembles Orcs Must Die or Orcs Must Die 2, where you are trying to defend against waves of upcoming enemies with an arsenal of deadly traps and deadly weapons. But it offers quite a bit more. So join me when we're exploring the castle of the alchemist. So let's answer the question, what is Castle of the Alchemist uh, really? Castle of the Alchemist is a, a game where you take the role of a highly mutated, first-of-a-kind warrior that is trying to help reclaiming the Castle of the Alchemist, uh, which is a bastion of free spirit minds as well as researchers that has recently been overrun. Um, the game itself features you in that protagonist role uh, with quite a few features. I want to um, show and highlight a couple of them. Uh, the game features an in-depth uh, crafting system where the alchemists uh, themselves can be equipped with a variety of weapons and equipment. Uh, the weapons uh, typically are comprised of one melee weapon, one ranged weapon, and four slots of consumables or usables. Uh, consumables would be the wrong word. They typically are reusable but do have a cooldown. Each of these items can be crafted and unlocked over time and has a uh, specific set of abilities. And we'll come up into a bit more review when we're looking at gameplay footage. The Alchemist itself is a highly mutated uh, super soldier, first of a kind, instable, but uh, quite interesting to play. Um, you will run through various parts of uh, the underlying dungeon and try to liberate them. And in exchange, uh, the Alchemist's uh, master or creator can continue to further improve uh, the alchemist. Whether it is uh, improvement of vision and uh, critical hit chance, whether that is improvement of uh, defenses such as reflexes, more carry capacity, denser muscles, more jumping, better uh, hit points uh, as a starter, you name it, you can actually customize your alchemist uh, mutation quite to your liking. On top of that, there are a couple of trainings av uh, available that really f uh, further feature the main aspects of this game. Whether it is focusing on melee combat or ranged combat, whether it is um, loading yourself with uh, vials or with spring traps, whether it is deploying additional turrets. So you can really kind of customize and work around a couple of uh, the loadouts, which I appreciated when playing because it gives uh, more than one approach uh, to the game. A further important aspect of the Alchemist is the utilization of traps. Uh, you typically start with a base set of traps, in this case, a barricade and a spike trap. Uh, traps in this game are a bit different uh, than in uh, Orcs Must Die in two regards. Number one, if you've ever played Orcs Must Die, uh, the traps are typically carrying 80%, maybe 90% of the load. And you as the uh, first person spectator are maybe trying to influence pathing of enemies, but generally the traps are doing most of the stuff. This is different in this game. Traps are a supplement. Now I would say they account for, say, 50% of uh, the damage uh, later in the game. In the beginning, maybe 10 or 20%. The Alchemist is uh, really the star of the show. The other differences, traps in this game uh, are coming with a reset mechanism or with a cooldown. You can see that here, even the first trap has a cooldown of 10 seconds, which means clustering up traps and building the typical mazes that you are 
uh, familiar with is not really working that well. Enemies are not immediately dying. Sometimes they kind of stumble further and therefore uh, really spreading out the traps over a longer distance is a much more efficient way. Just to give you a couple of impressions of traps, we do have spike traps, ceiling traps, which are free hanging traps that you can use in order to um, shoot at your leisure. You have furnace traps, um, which are like ginormous gas flame throwers. You have ceiling acid traps. Uh, you do have saw traps, which are blades in, in the ground that just continuously deal damage. And you do have slow traps as in any kind of tower defense-ish game. On top of it, uh, traps have different alternatives uh, that come at different price points and typically have one addition. So for instance, the spike traps can come as a poison uh, version and uh, on top of it can come as a bleeding version again uh, featuring uh, different play styles i give you another op uh, example traps can um, combo with one another for instance uh, the uh, mud trap which is kind of the slowing trap uh, can be up uh, can be upgraded or side graded into a sprinkler trap which is an oil uh, um, carpet instead of a mud carpet and that kind of uh, works well with furnaces uh, because they can uh, ignite it and you get uh, nice elemental effects on top of it in some of the missions you are uh, gifted with towers these towers are like in tower defense very strong uh, central structures that help you to kill enemies um, and all of them can also be further upgraded so there is a lot of depth within uh, the setup of how you would want to um, play a level. You could, of course, as, uh, appreciate that each of uh, the enemies comes with a certain set of weaknesses and resistances, um, a certain set of even immunities from uh, from time to time, and that each of the conditions in, in existence in the game um, are going to vary in efficiency between all of the enemies that you're finding. Between bleed, uh, burning, chilling, blinding, uh, co-raiding, um, fierce burning, complete freezing, poisoning and dazing, you can find your mix and measure of how to deal with the enemies. Uh, one particularly important difference to other games is um, you get achievements uh, throughout different parts of uh, your castle. You can see I'm kind of halfway through the game and uh, I could theoretically revisit older challenges. You can uh, see if I was to finish uh, that map with four vials equipped instead of two, I would get an additional achievement. These achievements become handy because they grant experience and in return experience um, will further level your character. So if you're ever stuck, you can sort of uh, grind it out. Now, to the obvious uh, facts, let's review a couple of features of the game and, th uh, and uh, showcase what I think about it and then also revisit some gameplay. Let's start with a little bit of the actual gameplay. The frame rates are smooth. The graphic certainly is something that you need to get uh, used to. If you are a fan of pixel art, it will absolutely be a game that you are going to enjoy. However, if uh, you are into modern graphics, uh, that is potentially going to be a pass for you. The sound effects of the game are actually quite good. The FX is fantastic. You can see and hear every single bit. Um, if you're planting a trap, uh, you uh, can definitely hear each of the individual uh, thoughts and shots coming off of it. Um, the variety of uh, sound effects is good and really helped in playing through the game. The music is not my uh, kind of forte. A lot of it is super heavy metal and very dark, gritty, uh, medieval uh, metal. It's okay for what it is. I think it fits the theme well. I personally didn't enjoy it as much, but that is more due to personal preference than anything else. The uh, controls are crisp and on point. Uh, you're always um, feeling like you are in control of your character and the stamina bar uh, is enough to get a couple of moves off. 
um, without kind of letting you do too much. But however, you can also further upgrade it. There are a couple of core mechanics in the game that I uh, would like to show you furthermore, because the actual um, combat and consistency of uh, the game is something that I appreciated a lot when playing. But before we are moving into the gameplay, uh, I wanted, and into the mechanics, I wanted to showcase just how well the game introduces all of the concepts. The tutorial is not overbearing. You're learning the most important aspects of combat and you're getting a fair description of what your main tasks are going to be. Before you are jumping into the first mission, you are being greeted by a short explanation that you could skip but it is worthwhile just reading through it, indicating how turrets work, what kind of turrets you can uh, build, and essentially giving you a chance to build up your first uh, maze and test out against new incoming enemies, how the gameplay itself would work out. I personally appreciated that. There was a lot of uh, thoughtful detail uh, without overbearing and forcing you to play a long tutorial. Let's uh, jump into the actual gameplay. So we are in a mission and I wanted to just show you how all of this is coming together. I've started to build an electric tower here. I used uh, traps like the saw trap and it says here conducts electricity. So there is a combination between the electric tower and the trap. If someone walks over, gets electrocuted, there is additional damage happening. On top of it, you can see that we're being greeted by three spawning waves of enemies. And how to deal with those enemies? Well, of course, we will greet them with a variety of traps. In this case, a ceiling acid trap will teach them better than to mess with us. We're putting a couple of slow traps in for good measure. And on top of that, I would really like to build kind of a small parkour here out of slow traps plus a maze uh, that they need to go through. Uh, the slow traps are my personal favorite. I want to showcase to you also another combination which is the furnace plus a slow trap. The slow traps that I'm using are oil traps. So there is that nice little combination that I talked about earlier which allows you to uh, really set them on fire. My character can uh, move between all of uh, these obstacles, place a couple of booby traps, that's number three and four, and then really start uh, going to town with his shotgun. On top of that, I do have a few usable items, a couple of caltrops that you can see here, but also a beautiful, beautiful smoke cloud that makes it very difficult for them to interact. And as long as I keep myself within that maze, we're going to be fine. Well, of course, as long as we are being able to uh, keep all of uh, the enemies off. Um, I'm switching to my melee hammer, just to showcase how melee works. Got a talent that triggers every 15 seconds. If I kill more than three enemies in melee, I can regain some hit points. And generally speaking, if you are low on hit points, besides that triggering, you can always heal yourself. Uh, there is a vial that uh, allows you to heal yourself twice per run. So it is limited and only once per wave, but it makes melee uh, valuable. You can see we're currently running out of uh, stamina, which means we're switching back to the shotgun couple of uh, further caltrops and even more of our smoke grenades will teach the enemies not to mess with us. Now, so putting a couple of booby traps down and seeing just beautifully how all of them are running into our uh, saws that are taking them out. I'm very low on health, uh, so I will be careful. There are also ranged opponents. But propose, uh, propose quite a bit of danger. So we gotta be careful here. And that 
was it. I have been taken out, but that's not the end of the mission. As you can see, I'm being bandaged. Uh, so, if you're fast enough, you could get your health up. But unfortunately, I wasn't. So, enough of uh, those 30 guys were coming through. I can now retry and I wanted to showcase that as well. One of the difficulties of uh, the game is you're not starting at wave uh, number two or three. You actually need to go consecutive through all five waves. So management of your health and management of the traps is a vital part to be successful. You're starting with 40 lives in this case as in any tower defense mission and you need to make sure that that is being taken serious. Anyways, enough from the gameplay for now. If you want to see a more successful run of the entire game, then this video needs to at least get 200, 250 likes and a few comments if you actually enjoy that sort of gameplay. My final verdict on the game is if you are an enthusiast for retro games, if you like pixel art, if you like difficult games, of the 1990s and early 2000s uh, before casual games took over. If you find yourself drawn to the tower uh, defense genre or to roguelike games, then that here might be just the title you have been looking for. The early access starts at the 17th of May and I give it a recommendation under those uh, site conditions. Of course, a little bit more balancing needs to happen between all of the different items and potentially also a few new enemies could be included for more variety. But other than that, I would say the game is spot on in the niche that it is trying to conquer. So I will give it a few more hours and if there is interest, I will definitely feature it. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next run. Bye bye.